Hey y'all, welcome back to Live, Laugh, Grow. Today we're gonna go over my daughter's fourth grade curriculum for the upcoming school year of 2018-2019. If you haven't checked out the curriculum discussion for my son's upcoming 2018-2019 kindergarten curriculum, be sure and check that out. So, without further ado, let's get started. La, 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 la. Okay, so for fourth grade, my daughter will be doing math, writing, language arts, which will be grammar, spelling, vocabulary, history, science, typing, photography, and reading. So let's talk about reading first. Let's pick reading. So for 2018-2019, she'll be actually doing the same thing for reading that she did last year. I had actually um, intended to shorten the time that she had to read every day. She will be reading every day for 45 minutes. I had initially tried 30 minutes, but within a couple of days, um, she came to me and said, Mom, I really want to read for 45 minutes a day again. So I went ahead and adjusted that. We did start school last week, so we took a week to kind of adjust for that. But for reading, she essentially gets to pick whatever she wants to read. We go to the library once a week. She picks out books. I don't have a set list of things for her to read. I will periodically go through and pick out one or two items that I would like for her to read that I feel like are on her level. The only rule that I have for her reading is that uh, comic books don't count. If she wants to read comic books on her own, which she really enjoys, those don't count for her reading time. Um, but other than that, she can do whatever she wants to. And this year I implemented for both my son and daughter that they have to keep track of their reading for portfolio reasons. So on her daily, she has a daily checklist of things she needs to do, but on the next page, she has a log of where she needs to log the books that she reads. Um, I have book title, author, she lists the book, and then the date that she completed it. So that's how we'll be tracking what she's getting done for reading this year. So reading this year is just that simple. So let's move into language arts. Okay, this year for language arts, we did mix it up. If you guys saw my curriculum overview for third grade, you will have seen that we tried something out last year for third grade that was just too boring. So I did a lot of research um, online and from the 102, 102 homeschool top picks, I researched a lot of the books in there for language arts and finally um, decided on Total Language Plus for spelling, vocabulary, grammar. It does have some writing in there, but I read um, some of the reviews. I went ahead and decided to also supplement with, let's see, can you see this? Essentials in Writing. It's um, strictly a writing program but it does cover some review for grammar just for strict for writing purposes. I mean, you have to know proper grammar to write. So it does have some uh, review of grammar in the beginning, but then it gets really heavy into writing. Um, so for the Total Language Plus, they have, these are more unit studies. Um, I purchased The Courage of Sarah Noble, Pippi Longstocking, and The Whipping Boy. Um, Within the book, it like I said, it has spelling, vocabulary, writing, it has different activities. It has a lot of activities, which my daughter really likes hands-on stuff. Um, so I think this is gonna work out really well. A lot of these, um, we started out with Sarah Noble, and I believe, so you have to get the book separately. I did not order the book through them. I just checked the book out from the library. They do recommend that the parent and the student read it. I mean, these are not long enough that I needed to get my own book. I just simply got the book before her, read the first two chapters, which was her first lesson, and then handed it over to her. So what she'll be doing is she'll be reading the book and then we'll be spending actually, I think eight weeks on this study. It might be seven, but each unit study is about six to eight weeks based on how many lessons in it. You can spread it out or condense it however you want. Based on last week, I was actually planning to do one lesson a week, but I think we might have to spread it out. It's a lot uh, to do in one week, especially when you're trying to cram grammar, spelling, vocabulary, and there are a lot of activities that she really enjoys, and I really wanna spend the time. I don't wanna rush her and have her not enjoy it like we did spelling last year because I'm trying to rush her and get her through too fast. So um, I think we're gonna like this, but we'll we'll see. And I'll give you an overview at the end of the year and, and we'll see how that goes. Um, 
the essentials in writing, it is, uh, if you're not familiar with this, it is, um, it is driven by DVDs. I think I've already taken the DVDs out of here, but this is the student workbook, but you, it goes with a DVD. You pop it in and they watch a lesson. It's actually a teacher on a writing board. He's writing and actually teaching them a lesson and then they come back and then they have activities that they need to complete. I did recently read um, one mom's review. I can't remember who it was. She was reviewing level 11, I believe, and she said they never even watched the DVD. So it can be something, um, and they just did the writing um, assignments in here. They strictly got the book for writing assignments. At this level, I'm not sure that that's something I would want to do. I could see in the upper levels where that, that could be applicable. But um, this isn't something that you have to teach. I do have to go in and check her work. And there are answers at the back and answers that will guide you through checking writing. But this is something that is DVD driven and something that you don't have to do. And so far, I think it's going to work out okay, but she's just starting in the grammar. So we'll, I'm excited to see how this is going to work out. So that will cover our vocabulary, our spelling, our grammar, our writing, kind of everything um, within language arts in kind of a unit study method. So we'll see how that goes for this year. As eclectic homeschoolers, we do bring in a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I don't have a box curriculum. We're not follow following the traditional classical method. If you watched last year's video, a lot of my um, resources were out of the well-trained mind and a lot of the things that I used. Um, I kept a lot of the things the same for my son's, um, for my son's pre-K to cr kindergarten, but for this year, we changed up several things for my daughter because in hopes that she would enjoy this year a little bit more. She didn't not enjoy last year, but there were things that she dreaded. So this is the one of the big changes that we made. So we'll see how that goes. So let's move into math. For math, I don't have a book. Um, just as I mentioned um, in some of my prior videos, I purchased Math Mammoth. Um, grades one through seven. So I essentially just print off their lessons as we go along. I chose not to do Saxon math or anything other than that because it was very expensive for a single year and I didn't want the traditional classroom style math. But in Math Mammoth, I print off her lesson. She has her own little binder. I don't know that you can see this. She goes through, this is actually my son's book. <laughs> Let me grab her book. So this is her binder. I just printed it off. It's PDF. I print it in color. In here, um, it has what I really like about it at the beginning of every lesson. It has a lot of additional activities. It overviews the chapter. And then it has, see in this chapter, she has two pages of additional activities that we could actually go online just so she can master those skills. Not so she's going through and we're just touching on um, different math skills because it's really important that you master your math skills early on or you're going to be lost later. So I really like that Math Mammoth provides all these additional resources to make learning a little bit more fun. So that is something that we kept the same from last year, something I really don't see us changing in the future, but um, we shall see. Just like last year, my daughter is doing typing again. She did not finish her typing last year. So um, we use typing.com. We do use the free version. There is a paid version that would eliminate the ads. When they are typing, there are ads around their little box. Um, but it hasn't really been an issue for us. They are age appropriate ads. It's nothing inappropriate and it doesn't even seem to distract um, them from their work. So she will be completing the typing lesson. She is enjoying that. It's an opportunity for her to get on the computer and work through that. So that's typing.com and you can just go on and sign up as a teacher and assign your students. So that's typing. Um, for history, um, history and science, once again my son and daughter will be doing those together. For history we will be doing Story of the World again. This is Story of the World, Volume 2, The Middle Ages. I have purchased the hardback book. This year, which is different than last year, I actually purchased the, um, a test and answer key book. It was only like seven bucks. I'm not 100% sure if we're going to use this. Um, because we have to submit a portfolio to our state at the end of the year, 
um, to show what they have done. I didn't have a whole lot of, well, I have all the activity sheets that I submitted for her portfolio last year, but I kind of wanted her to do a test. So I might see how this goes, but because it was such a inexpensive investment, I went ahead and purchased it. We'll see how it goes. Um, we just started, so as of right now, of course, I haven't done anything. I haven't even spent too much time looking at it, but it is something that I purchased. Um, and then, of course, just like last year, we got the activity book, which seems to be way thicker this year than it was last year. Um, if you are familiar with Story of the World, you know um, you read the, the stories out of the book here. And then in the activity book, it has maps, it has um, color sheets, and then it has um, additional reading where it'll provide a list of literature that you can read. So we check books out at the library and then we do fun activities. Last week, like I said, was our first week at school. We were gonna be building um, a cookie Roman pillar because we started off the year uh, reviewing the end of Rome. So we were gonna build that and then destroy it like barbarians. So that was kind of cool. So we're excited. We really like the story of the world. I don't see us saying at the end of the year that we didn't like it. My kids were so excited when we unboxed this. If you saw the unboxing video, they were super excited um, and were like, we're gonna do everything this year, right? So um, that's what we're doing this year. And if I haven't said it a hundred times, I'm gonna say it one more time. We're very excited about it. And then for science, we are actually uh, for, I picked our science curriculum actually based on my son this year. Um, last year, science kind of trailed off toward the end of the year and I became slacker homeschool mom. And I kind of let them do their own unit study, which worked out really well and they enjoyed it. But I kind of wanted my son to kind to understand the basics of a lot of things. Um, now that he's in kindergarten and there were some things that I wasn't sure my daughter was ever introduced to. So this was a way for us to go back to the basics and see really what their interests were. If there was something in here that they really liked, then I would know it and we could pursue that further. So um, I got this Intro to Science student pages. It comes, let's see, it comes with a teacher book. So this was the student pages. Um, I print it off and I have the teacher pages for me. Um, it goes through this, like I said, it is very basic. I'm not sure I would recommend it if you only have older children. We're doing this because I have a kindergartner. Um, but it goes through like the first week. We did first week, she colored some crayons. We did, we, I don't have the picture here printed off yet, but we made wax crayons. Um, so she got to say, you know, what I learned from my experiment. Um, and she, they're in the student, in the teacher pages, you can actually print off where older children have to provide more information, do more observations with experiments and things like that. And with this study, um, it's Intro to Science by Paige Hudson. She recommends, um, or not really recommends, she said to go alongside this and to actually complete a lot of the uh, projects, you need three other books. So we have the Handbook of Nature Study here, which is a little intimidating if you see this big, thick book. This is not really so much for your kids to read, it's more for you to read, and then when you go on nature walks and things like that, you're informed so you can answer questions that they have. In our first week, we went on a nature hike, and um, the study, I, I had to read four pages in here, was about pine trees. It was actually kind of funny because one of the unit studies my daughter did last year was actually on pine trees, so she knew a lot of this stuff, um, but my son did not, so we were able to learn a few things there. So that's a nature study book. And then we have more mud pies to magnets, which if you're not familiar with this, this whole book is dedicated to different science experiments. So she references uh, different experiments to do that are related to that week's topic. So you have this. This was actually something we purchased last year and never used. So I was excited to be able to use that this year. 
And then we have um, the Usborne First Encyclopedia of Science to go with this. So just like the mud pies to magnets experiment, like the first week we talked about solids, liquids, and gases. She tells you what page you need to turn to in this book to learn more about solids, liquids, and gases. She does give a brief overview and explain explain to you as the teacher how to relate it to the children and show them different things. These other books are just to go into further detail. I think we're going to like this. I think this is going to be a great opportunity for them to be able to find the things that they like in science. They really like history um, and last year they really liked animal science study. I'm hoping um, like with human body and some other things, they both found those kind of boring. So I'm hoping this will give them the opportunity to really find what they enjoy about science. Okay. So the very last thing my daughter's doing, she wanted so badly um, to learn about photography. She, last year, she, um, she had, even since she was small, I guess most kids probably like taking pictures and being in pictures and doing things. So we thought it would be really cool if she actually learned and started develop developing actual skills to use um, a camera for real. <laughs> so I printed off. Uh, my husband actually remembered when we were talking about this that years and years and years ago, <laughs> I guess it was probably eight years ago, um, when we were trying to um, learn how to take pictures and really develop our photography skills, um, he purchased a class called Extremely Essential Camera Skills. And it was something, let's see, that he still had out there. And it really covers the basics. It talks about um, flash and really being able to use your camera and camera in manual mode and learning the basics of your camera. So we actually had a uh, Nikon, I think D40 that he gave her and she's going to start taking pictures and actually learning how to use that camera and learning how to use it in manual mode. So, and because I'm wanting to brush up on my camera skills, this is something we're, we're gonna do together. I blocked it off um, in this table of contents I looked at and I blocked it off in lesson types. We're gonna do this once a week. It comes with, it goes through when it talks about the lesson it has activities, it actually assigns activities. It says, okay, this week we're gonna talk about flash. So she goes, okay, so this is a picture with flash. See how the light is so harsh. And this is a picture without. Take some pictures and see the difference. And you'll see why we want you to learn to be able to actually operate your camera in manual mode. And then, you know, like what the different things is, get, getting familiar with your camera and things like that. So that's something she was interested in, something that we're working into school. And fortunately, we didn't have to purchase any kind of curriculum. We're gonna try to make do with what we have and we'll see how that goes. And, um, and I'll, I'll let you guys know at the end of the year how well she's doing it. Maybe then I can share some of her f photographs that she's taken maybe at the beginning of the year and then at the end of the year and we'll see how that's gone. Okay, the last thing I wanted to show you guys, just like with my son, um, my daughter has a, a weekly checklist. I, because we're eclectic homeschoolers and I develop our curriculum, I don't get a box curriculum. I piecemeal everything together, so I have to figure out what all they have to get done to be able to complete each of these curriculum items. She has a weekly checklist and it says, okay, on Monday you need to do math, language arts, writing, and it tells her how many lessons she needs to do. So I just kind of wanted to give you guys, that's how we set up our weeks. She has a checklist and then like you saw, that has her reading log on the end of it. So um, that's how we <laughs> do our homeschooling. I'm excited about her fourth grade year. So if you like this video, found it helpful, make sure and like it in the, down below and subscribe to the channel. I'll um, be sharing other homeschool things and other mom-like things. So be sure and come over and join us. And thank y'all for being here. Y'all take care.